In this video, I want to show a quick demonstration of how you can utilize themes in your project today. Setting up a theme in your game project is a great way to make sure your styles and themes throughout the project stay consistent. It's also a great way to play around and experiment with different styles without having to individually go into each component and adjust it. So the first thing we need to do is I'm going to go into a themes folder that I already created. I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to create a new resource. From this, we can search for theme and then double click on it. I'm just going to call mine default. You can call yours whatever you like. We're going to save that. The next thing we need to do is go into our project, project settings, and set our default theme. So if we just search theme in here and click on theme, if you had a font that you want to use project wide, you would just set it here. I'm going to show you how you can set up the font in the theme itself. So we're going to right click next to custom here, this folder. We're going to go to our new theme, which is default here. It's going to ask you to save and restart. You need to do that. So now if we double click on our theme, you can see we get this new theme window. Before we get going in our theme, let's set up a canvas layer so we can demo this. So first I'm going to select other node and I'm just going to do a canvas layer. First thing I'm going to add is a panel container. And then inside of here, let's do a VBox container. And then inside of here, we're going to do a margin container. And then lastly, a button. So if you double click on your theme, you'll get this theme window. Let's start with the panel container. To add a new theme type, you just click the plus here. One thing to note is on top of searching the existing types, it also allows you to create custom ones. So for instance, say you were looking for the button and you typed button like this and then hit enter, assuming it was going to pick up this. It's not. It's going to create a new type called button that knows nothing about this button. You could click on this button and override the default themes everywhere for the button. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to call it custom panel container to keep it simple. So I'm going to call it custom panel container. I'm going to click add type. This custom panel container still knows nothing about what a panel container is. So what we need to do is go to our tools here and set the base type as panel container so that it knows what we're inheriting from. Same thing as before, you want to make sure you click on the actual one you want. If you just type in something and hit enter, it's going to create a new one. So we want to actually inherit from this panel container. So at this point, our custom panel container is an exact replica of panel container. So let's save our scene here and you can just save it anywhere. So let's zoom back into our canvas layer here. So we created this custom panel container. It's inheriting from panel container. So the first thing we want to do is make sure this panel container is inheriting from our custom one. So just click on it over the inspector and you can go down to theme and under type variations, we select custom panel container and we can save that. So now anything in our default theme for custom panel container will show up here. So now if we double click on our theme again, so in this default section, this will differ depending on the component that you're overriding. So for the panel container, click here. And then to override the default panel container, we need to click the add button and we'll do a new style box flat. And then if you click on it, it'll open up in the inspector here and now we can override it. So if you click on the color here and you can see as we change this, it's changing our new panel container. So let's just find any color here. We'll just do a nice dark gray. We'll make it a little transparent. And let's give it a border radius. We'll do 24 pixels all the way around. And you can play around in here depending on the type that you're inheriting from. There's lots of different things that you can adjust. So let's save that. Let's go back to our panel container and let's make this the full rack. So now it's taking up the entire space of the viewport. So now you can see our border radius. Next, let's do the margin container. So if we come back into our theme here, we're going to add a new type. Let's do custom margin container. And we're going to click add type. And we're going to come to the tool here, click the plus, and we're going to inherit from margin container. So you'll notice in this one, we get a couple more options that we didn't get in panel container. As you can imagine, we can set the margin. So let's override the default margin. So we got to click plus on all these for our custom margin container type we can set what we want the margin to be for this type. So we're just going to set it to 24 all the way around. Now again, since we didn't override margin container, we created our own. We have to tell this margin container that we want it to inherit from that. So we go back to theme, the theme type, custom margin container. Let's demo this button. So let's come into here. As you can start to see the pattern here, we're going to do custom button. 
putting custom in front of every type is probably not the best idea. What you probably want to do is give it a more unique name to what you're using it for. So if you're creating a main menu, you would maybe do custom main menu button or something like that. Go ahead and click add type. Just like before, we need to tell it that we want to inherit from the button. And then you can see here we get even more options. So we can set the font color for normal, the disabled, the focus, the hover, when it's pressed, and so on. You can also set a font here. Let's actually click on the button inspector before we go any further so we can see that our changes in the theme take effect. So if you click on button, we're just going to give it a label of new game. Now, as you can see in the inspector, and as you've maybe done in the past, you can do a lot of the same things inside of this inspector. So we could do theme overrides, we could change the fonts, the font color, size, all that. The problem is every time we wanted to adjust a button, we'd have to come in here manually and do that. So if we decided to change fonts or change the color or style of our button, we'd have to go to every button and do that. By utilizing themes, it allows us to experiment and try out different styles a lot faster. So let's go back to our theme and make sure custom button is selected. And then we're going to go to our font. So if we click here, we can override the default font. We're going to load, navigate to wherever your font is. I downloaded this one off of Kenny, and I will leave a link in the description to this font. And you can see as soon as that loads, it changes our font for a button. So now anywhere we use this custom button type, this is going to be the font. If you're not seeing that take effect, sometimes you need to close down the editor and reopen it. So the next thing we can do is if we click here, we can override what the button looks like normally when it's hovered, when it's focused, when it's pressed or disabled. So let's click on the plus to override the normal behavior. And we're going to do a new style flat box or a new style box flat. And click on it. And now you can see we can change the color. What we can also do is set the corner radius to give it rounded corners. We can give it a border width. And we can even set the color of the border. So now if we come back into our theme here, let's override the hover also. So if we click on hover, we'll do new style box flat again. And then click on to open up the inspector. Actually, let's come here. We're going to come back in the normal. I'm going to copy this color. And then let's, we're going to paste that in. And then I'm going to give it a little opacity when it's hovered. And then the same thing, since we override the default, it's not going to inherit anything anymore. So when we went back to, so if we go back to normal, you can see we gave it borders and we gave it corner radius. This hover will not have it. So when you hover, you'll lose all that. So you need to set that up again to whatever you want. Or if you don't want it, then you don't need to. So the next thing I want to show you is if you come to margin container, go to layout container sizing and just click expand. What the expand is going to do is it's going to tell this margin container to take up all the space available, which in this case, since it's the only thing, it's going to take up all the space minus the margin. We collapse this and then you can do control D if you're on a windows or command D if you're on a Mac and just do that four times. Now we have four buttons here. And if you wanted to, we could add another margin container to our VBox to add a little spacing between our top three buttons and our bottom. So we can just call this spacing. And then we'll move it above the, or in between the third and fourth button. And then if we come to themes and type variations, set it to our custom margin container. And now we have a little bit of spacing. Next, let's go back into our theme by double clicking on theme and go to the font the font size one. Let's go ahead and click the plus here to override. And then let's set this to 32. So now you can see that all the buttons that are using this type variation have a font size of 32. Next, I wanted to show you how you can override a theme. So if you come into this last button here, and you'll see the section called theme overrides. In this section, you can do a lot of what you can do inside the themes. This is great for when you're using a custom theme on a component and it covers 90% of what you need 
instead of creating a whole new theme type, you can just come in here and modify the little bit that you need. So for this last button, let's override the hover by clicking on the empty here and do new style box flat, and then go ahead and click on it. And on hover, let's just change it to a red color. And since we overrode the hover, we also have to reset the radius and border width. So now let's go ahead and run this and see how it looks. So you can see we got four buttons that we overrode the default UI, and then we also overrode the hover. And then for our last button, we set it to a hover of red. And then if you remember on the pressed event, if you click and hold, you can see that we no longer have the styling and it's going back to the default. So if you click and hold, you can see we lose our corner radius and the color is black. Likewise, we didn't set the focus. So if you tab through the buttons, you can see it changes focus. And you can also see that the focus does not have a corner radius. The last thing I wanted to show you is how you can manage your theme types. So if you go back into your theme and click this manage items, this will show you all your current types that you have. It'll allow you to add more types, delete types. What it'll also do is show you the settings of each type. So that'll help you keep track as this list grows longer to know what each type is actually doing. Well, I suppose.